happy to be here to describe one of our projects, which is the Early Childhood Intervention Doctoral Consortium, value added to early childhood intervention doctoral programs. This is an advanced research training doctoral program in early development intervention, and we're very grateful to the Department of Education who has been sponsoring it. Here is our disclaimer for the Project Directors Conference. And we are going to describe over the next half hour or so with you our project. With me is my two co-directors, Ann Kaiser from Vanderbilt University and Christina Wilson from the University of Connecticut. Uh, we are very lucky to have 25 scholars across nine universities representing four different disciplines, occupational therapy, social work, special education, and speech and language therapy. These are the universities that we are currently involved with, the University of Cincinnati, University of Colorado Denver, University of Connecticut, University of Georgia, University of Hawaii, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, University of North Carolina, University of Washington, and Vanderbilt University. The reason that we got together to um, de design this uh, consortium is because we have found over the years that there's a critical need for early intervention research in the field. There's relatively few studies of children with complex, need, complex needs birth to three years old, and there's only a small evidence base for the practices we use in early intervention. We also have very unique challenges in early intervention research. We have children with complex and varied needs. It's a low incidence population, we have multidisciplinary needs and services, and we have dispersed intervention services. They're not school-based. They're usually provided by contractors or programs um, and many different disciplines. We also know there's a critical need for research training in methodology. Multiple methods are used, single case design, mixed methods, and there's few researchers with expertise in early intervention research and there's even fewer programs of research focusing on early intervention. We designed this program uh, for our scholars to be competency-based. It's organized into short courses, seminars, summer institutes, and practica and clinical opportunities. These are in addition to the scholar's own doctoral requirements at their own university, whether it be in special ed, early childhood special ed, occupational or speech therapy, or social work. So the kinds as samples of the content of these modules and courses and seminars are etiology and characteristics of the population, families, systematic instruction, single subject design one and two, inclusive practices, policy, adult learning, mixed methods, and meta-analyses. And this is just a few of the topics. We are using um, project-based learning. So we are building in opportunities for uh, scholar-faculty uh, collaborations and scholar-scholar collaborations throughout all of our modules and seminars. And our competencies are quite robust and the competencies do overlap with the existing programs to some extent, but not necessarily in the population that we are most interested in. We have these areas, five areas of competencies. As you can see at the very top is advanced research methods because we are building all of our competencies um, to culminate in research. So we have our foundation of pedagogy for infants and young children with intensive needs. We are focusing on IHE, institutions of higher education teaching, community engagement and service, leadership skills, and then, as I said, advanced research methodology. Each one of our areas are broken down to specific competencies and specific experiences that are individualized to each scholar. So under our population based, we focus on family-centered practice and cultural competence, interdisciplinary collaborations, systemic data-based interventions, and inclusive learning environments. Our second area, which is uh, teaching, uh, is primarily focusing on evidence-based 
personnel preparation and professional development, adult learning principles and practice, mentorship and supervision, and instructional technology. A third area, which is the community engagement and service, state and national impact, policy analysis, systems change, and faculty induction. And all of these, besides having modules, have practical application and experiences our scholars will focus on. I'm going to turn this over now to my colleague, Anne Kaiser, who is going to focus on the research, which is what our whole uh, doctoral consortium is built upon. Thank you, Mary Beth. Research and scholarship is the center of this program, as Mary Beth has described it. There are five main areas that we're emphasizing. The first is research analysis, synthesis, and applications to practice. The second is advanced research methods. The third is implementation science. The fourth, writing, especially for publication. And last, but also not least, is grant writing to support programs of research and personnel preparation. I've come to think about faculty researchers as being the link between research and practice in both the work that they do as researchers and the work they do in teaching and training. So integrating research and scholarship into the, into the consortium training is an important way for us not only to advance research, but to ensure high quality translation of research into practice. Next slide. So the consortium has several research content areas and a number of different experiences. We have embedded advanced research content throughout the curriculum in all of the components that Mary Beth mentioned earlier. And we've done this through presentations by researchers and scholars, readings that include contemporary research, discussions about research practice and application, and using application of research as a basis for innovations in the field. We also have cross-institutional and transdisciplinary research projects in addition to what students are doing in their own doctoral programs. Because we have a large number of institutions, students come from programs that have very wide-ranging requirements for research and particularly um, varied in the research the access they have to research in early childhood. So these cross-institutional and cross-discipline projects allow students to get a type of training and practice in doing research that would not be available to them in their existing doctoral program. One of the, the most important courses we've offered so far was an advanced single case design training that bridged two summers Almost all of our students have some access to single case design training, but almost none of them have advanced single case training. And so this two summer institute has made it possible for students in both of our cohorts to learn more about innovations in single case design, how to choose among designs, special design considerations as they apply to young children with intensive needs and their families, the ever-changing and important standards for single case design research and measurement, additional work related to reliability, observation, and measurement, and in particular, emphasis on the importance of generalized versus context-bound behavior change because generalized change is such an important outcome for young children with intensive needs. We've been very fortunate to have expertise in this area from a number of nationally known scholars. And now Christina is going to talk about a couple of those cross-institutional, cross-disciplinary projects that our students and faculty are involved in. Thank you, Anne and Mary Beth. One of um, the examples of a cross-institutional research project we have looks at perceptions of families. And this is a collaboration between a doctoral student at Vanderbilt, Paige Bennett, and, it, who is, and Courtney O'Grady, who's currently an assistant professor and a former doctoral student at the University of Illinois. 
And our wonderful Mickey Ostrowski is overseeing this uh, project. He's a professor of special education at the University of Illinois. And they're taking a look at some qualitative research questions, looking at teachers' perspectives of challenging behavior within the preschool classroom, and also some look at data that already exists in a secondary data analysis, looking at teachers' perspectives of families of children with most challenging behaviors. Another example that we wanted to provide is a cross-disciplinary research collaboration, uh, the Latino Families Project. And that involves myself um, in the School of Social Work, along with um, two uh, doctoral scholars, Emily Longo, who has a master's in marriage and family therapy um, and a doctoral, one of my doctoral students, and Emily Jackson, who's a doctoral student in speech and language at the University of Connecticut. So together we're looking um, at this project that focuses on increasing health and well-being of Hispanic families who have a child with a disability. We're interested in cultural factors, things around parenthood, identity, self-efficacy, and also stigma as being a parent with a child with a disability. So we're interested in a variety of different things, we're, uh, including the relationship of uh, cultural constructs uh, that are common in Latino families. Uh, like familismo, respecto, and machismo, uh, to the stigma experiences of Hispanic families who have a child with a disability. We are also interested in parental stress and how this affects parental identity and self-efficacy. And then finally, we're looking at how Hispanic parental beliefs and practices relate to communication and the supports and services the children receive that needs uh, communication support. So we've had some evaluation of our wonderful doctoral scholars um, and as part of uh, our evaluation component. Um, and as far as the Summer Institute goes, 100% of our scholars are reporting an increased knowledge they, from research presentations by outside speakers, and 88% of the scholars are reporting an increased knowledge. We are embedding, like we mentioned, research into the curriculum, and 97 of our scholars are reported the effectiveness of these research collaborations, and we provided some of those examples. These are some direct quotes from our scholars saying, one says, research opportunities um, was, you know, positive part of the experience, looking forward to the next phase and working with faculty from other universities. Another direct quote is opportunities to network, attend conferences and participate in group discussions and publish. This seen as a really positive factor of this doctoral consortium. So our scholars are doing one wonderful, great work. Um, and so we wanted to show off some of their productivity. They have been involved in already in research presentations with uh, their uh, mentors, with other faculty across universities and with other scholars in collaborations um, across universities and across disciplines. They've also been involved in publications already, and we know how slow sometimes that wheel moves. However, they have already started to publish um, in academic journals that we're really proud of, and um, they've provided contributions to policy, practice, and teaching. As an example, here are some of the presentations. Um, these are primarily presentations um, from the National um, Conference on Early Intervention, a CRI um, presentations. We had a, quite a few, so these are just some exam examples. Um, one, examining the current literature on challenging behavior in preschool classrooms. Another um, uh, talking about cha changes in how early interventionists coach caregivers, a sequential mixed method study. Um, another uh, one looking at characterizing caregiver implementation for contrasting approaches to measuring fidelity and change. And finally, another example, trauma-informed care, the mismatch between early childhood special education teachers' attitudes and practices. Just to make note, these are just a few. We have present, our scholars doing presentations internationally at ASHA and at other various venues that we're also very proud of. I'm gonna hand it over to Mary Beth to kind of conclude and wrap up for us. Thank you guys. 
Um, so as you can see, we have a very full curriculum. We are very lucky to have such wonderful faculty and students working with us because we encourage each other. Um, so we will have at the end of our uh, grant period, which is another two years, 25 early childhood special ed um, PhD level scholars. Now, in regard to using that title, we know that they will have a background in early childhood special ed, though they may have different disciplines, um, such as we said, OT, speech and language social work. They will have expertise in methods and content of early intervention research. We are really hoping that this is our next generation of researchers, and we're doing all we can to give them the skills and the knowledge that they need. They will be prepared to assume academic research and leadership positions because in early childhood intervention, we are like in every other age band, um, seeing huge shortages that are now trickling down to the university level. Um, as early career um, professionals, they will be contributing to the early intervention research. And most importantly, because we know that collaboration uh, is an easy word to say, but a harder word to act on, uh, we will have experienced research collaborators across universities and disciplines as these 25 scholars go forward in their uh, academic careers. And we would like to thank everybody who has participated in this program, um, including, as I said, our scholars and our um, faculty and the universities that are supporting them, as well as OSEP, who supports us. And this is our website, and if anybody needs any further information, um, please reach out. There's my email. Um, and uh, Anne and Christina are also uh, available to talk about this project. Actually, is everybody who's involved because we have a very uh, large level of excitement and uh, we want to keep it going. Thank you all for your attention.